Bill the Bastard was a horse and is about to be immortalised in bronze. One of them was called Bill, and he was a bastard of a horse. He used to pig root, he used to buck people off, just impossible to ride. He was 17.1 hands, that's 5 foot 9 at the shoulder. I mean, he's like a tall rhinoceros. And he behaved like one. Grandfather heard about him, being what we call these days a, a horse whisperer, I guess. He went down and he used to go up and talk to the horse. He used to run his hands over, he used to bag him. And he'd do this every time he got a spare moment. And eventually, uh, Bill uh, allowed him to get up on him. He pig rooted, he, he bucked a bit and Grandad stayed with him, and from then on, that was his horse. Bill the Bastard, of course, many more remember the book, the book reading on ABC Radio last year. And this year, of course, uh, is the 100th anniversary of the charge of Beersheba, which were the last uh, conflicts that the Australian light horse participated in. Bill the Bastard, a legend among legends, you could say, and is about to be immortalised in bronze. And the sculptor is Carl Valerius, and Carl joins me this morning. Good day, Carl. Morning, Michael. Yeah, thank you very much. Now you're in yeah. you're in Sconston, a warehouse somewhere in southwestern New yeah, South I'm Wales. In, uh, Murrumburra. Murrumburra, yep. And which is near Harden, which is just near Cootamundra and Young. Yep. And we have a studio which was the old silo, but not the silo round one, but a big building. Yeah. Built yeah. house in there. Now Notwithstanding that you, you're maybe an artist of some sort, how did you become interested in the story about Bill the Bastard? Well, it was a weird thing. Um, our local politician in seven, 1978 asked me, I did a monument first to the first Australian horse, which was f- formed here in 1897. And the, our local politician said, now, are you going to do Bill the Bastard? And I knew nothing about Bill the Bastard. And I have done, I did a small horse, with the five people on, which does not do a tribute. And then in 2012, when Roland Perry's book came out, The Bill the Bastard, it attributed, it says at the end of the book, where is Bill now? And he said there is a life-size Bill in Murrumburra, New South Wales. Now, I said to Roland, you should have said lifelike. <laughs> but since then, I'm glad he left life-size because the life-size one is now, it is modelled with the five people on. We have a visitor's book at the studio and I have had people from every state in use in Australia come to see this horse. And it's not it's starting to be in bronze. The first soldiers in bronze. And and, and uh, it has to be life size to really get home the fact that how big that horse was, doesn't it? It, it is. It's mind blowing. People just walk in and see it and go, Oh my God, this incredible animal. He's exactly to scale, he's exactly 17.1 hands, all the uniforms are correct, every fingernail is correct, the rifles, you can sight down the barrel of the rifles that I made, it is absolutely a classical statue. Now I've seen the sort of, I suppose you'd say the plaster mock-up, yes. and, and as you said, you're in the process of getting different parts of it, yes. uh, bronze. Yeah, bronze. What, how it came to, it looks like a bronze statue, because 2016, was the centenary of the rescue at Romani on the 5th of August 1916. So when I, I mixed it up, I thought I had 16 months. And in fact, I had four and a half months from a cold start to get the statue finished. Mm. So it took me 1,650 hours with a lot of support from other people. And we did have the unveiling and the Shanahan, a lot of descendants of Shanahan were at the unveiling in August the 6th, 19, or 2016. And since then, this thing is just... It's an incredible story that a lot of people don't know about this horse and what it achieved. Yeah. He, he was at Gallipoli. He got shot twice at Gallipoli. He comes back to the Middle East. He's at Romani, where he picks up four other soldiers. He could have ejected any one of them at any time. He takes them back to safety. He then goes back into battle. Shanahan is shot. Shanahan kept on the horse until he collapsed. Then Bill walks him back to the vets to save him. It's I incredible. Mean, it's just an incredible. Then, it, which is now the centenary of the charge of Bersheba, young Ben Towers was a machine gunner, and he had his mount, and he asked, could he have Bill as his pack horse? Now, this horse gets a machine gun and all the gear put on him, and at the full charge, 
when they're at full gallop, the rope goes slow, loose between Towers and Bill. Mm. Towers looks around and has his damn horse with a machine gun strapped on him trying to pass him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's just... And look, at the Battle of Romani, 30 minutes was the average horse's endurance, and Bill went for six hours. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so when you read a lot about them, they, they often had to travel long distances and yeah. spend, you know, 24 to 48 hours without drinking any yeah. water at all. Well, that was the thing, too, that when Bill was coming across, Banjo Patterson was the horse master mm. for all the horses. Now, each horse was given 10 gallons of water, and Bill never, ever drank his allotment of water. So he was an incredible endurance animal. It's just, it's the story, the back stories. The beautiful part about this is how the Shanahan's family that had lost touch with each other, have all come back together. You know, and what a fabulous backstory. Yeah, just recently, you mean? Yes, just yes, just recently, and since August last year. Mm. There were two sides of the family, because Shanahan had two wives, but that was a different story. But, they, I mean, the depth in that, and the when those the descendants come, and see this horse with the five riders, they just stop, you know? And yeah. I think... Um of, I think there were about 400,000 or so horses taken over for that conflict. Yeah, yeah 200,000 horses went uh, into the war. Uh, Bill didn't die. He had a girlfriend called Penny because he was a stallion. Yep. Uh, they went back to Gallipoli at the end of the war for the clean-up through the War Graves Commission, and Bill and Penny went back there, and a Turkish farmer from Suvla Bay took him in, and Penny, and they said, there's a lot of horses that look like Bill. <laughs> now, now people have said, oh, how do you know he survived in Gallipoli? There is a photograph from 1922 standing up behind the people from the Wargraves Commission at Gallipoli. So there is an actual photo existing which proves that Bill did get back there and did survive. As you said, it's an amazing story, and it's well documented. So there's, there's, whilst it sounds like someone's made up some story about a superhuman horse, if, that, if you exactly. get my drift, it, it's exactly. actually exactly very well uh, documented. Now, your sculpture, when have, you got, had it, when have you got to have it completed by, Carl? We're going to unveil it on the 7th of October 2018, which is the centenary of the end of the war. Okay, so um, because there's two ton of bronze in this thing, and yeah. it's an, we've we've got a fantastic committee that are raising funds and grants and an enormous amount of support. And the other all important question is, where is it going to be situated? It'll be situated in Murrumburra, where the book says that it is. I mean, people we've had people came from Ballarat. A chap came up. He said, "I've just finished reading Roland Perry's book." And I had to come and see this. Yes. <laughs> and that, that is just... And there were people coming to see this life-size horse and there's this little toy horse there. <laughs> <laughs> I, I must admit, I, after the book reading on ABC Radio, I got the book out of the library and read it as well and um, talked about it a bit. I mean, what an incredible animal. And we, I get, and I was the same. I knew nothing of this animal. And I'm not taking anything from Simpson and his donkey. He was incredible. But here's this animal that's just gone off in the ether that we know nothing about. Mm. Now, um, the I suppose it would cost a fair bit to make this, wouldn't it, this sculpture? The, the, total, the total cost of the sculpture and installation is just on $800,000. So it is not a cheap project. No. Uh, I, Faye and I, my wife and I have funded it to this point to, to actually get it up and to get it together. And people said, oh, you're in a high-risk project. And I said, look, nowhere near the risk that these men put their life on the line for. I mean, all I'm risking is money and a bit of effort. In some ways, the ends justify the means because once it's created, it's created and uh, exactly. it's there for years. Has the, um, has the Australian War Memorial, have they uh, been helpful in any way? Yeah, they've been very helpful. They're aware of it. Uh, there is also Bill ran at the end of the war the, the Jericho Cup. Uh, in 1918, which was... He was never ridden again after Shanahan. They he, they said he would only ever be used as a pack horse in respect. But young Muller, an Aborigine that helped Shanahan break the horse in, rode Bill bareback at the Jericho Cup. And Bill's coming last, or well, nearly last, and the young Aboriginal got up and got in his ear and he said, come on, you bastard, you can beat that big black bugger. 
<laughs> so he's 15 metres ahead, and he takes off, and he beats him. He runs up on a sand dune, jumps around, comes back, throws off Muller, and stands up straight. <laughs> So they're rerunning the Jericho Cup in Warrnambool in 1918, or 2018. <laughs> 2018, yeah. What's, um, what became of Michael Shanahan? Michael, uh, he actually lived in, in uh, Brisbane. He came there. He, was, he had his, as a where he was a leg off, and he used two sticks to walk around. Mm. And he drove a lift for many years. Mm. Yeah, it must have been. That, that, I mean, the bond between horse and man, when you oh, read the books and realise... Mm. Like they told Shanahan he'd never ride again, but he did. Yeah. Uh, now the, what, it, the thing out of all this is how, what, how traumatic it must have been for those soldiers to see their horses shot. Yeah, yeah. And um, the book talks about that, having to take sort of, um, you know, almost like draw the short straw and yeah. um, get, um, you know, be selected to take a, a few of them behind the sand dunes. It, was, it yeah. would have been... Oh, it would have been hell. Yeah, absolutely terrible. And uh, but it's glad to know that Bill, that wasn't Bill's fate. And um, I think uh, from I think one horse I think made it back to Australia when it belonged to one of the generals. No yeah, surprises I think that's there. That's true. Yes. And uh, it's not many out of two hundred thousand. No, it is not. Hey, Carl, uh, lovely to talk with you. So um, it'll be the sculpture will be ready to be unveiled in time for the 7th of October next year, which is... Uh, 2018. 2018, yeah. it'll and be we're, in... We're working with the people from the Jerry, um, from the in Warrnambool. Yep. Uh, so we've connected. We're sort of sharing each other's stories and because it is a story of Bill. Uh, it's an incredible thing. And we're, we're at the studio now and the horse is there. Now, just on Friday, I had 48 people come in to look at the statue as it's getting made. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just incredible. Fantastic stuff, Carl. Thank you very much for joining us this morning. Well, thank you, and thank you for asking me. Uh,